We've got two down. Let's go to the third one that's been proposed. What about the laws of nature? Could life, when you look at that uh, DNA cell, could life have arisen through a law-like process of self-organization? Excellent question. This has been where a lot of the action has taken place in what's called uh, chemical evolutionary theory or um, origin of life research. And there was a very specific proposal suggesting that the information in the DNA molecule might have arisen because of the forces of attraction between the individual subunits of the DNA. And similarly, the proteins might have originated as the result of forces of attraction between the amino acids that form the long chains that fold up into the proteins. This idea was first proposed by a scientist named Dean Kenyon and his colleague Gary Steinman in a book called Biochemical Predestination. They weren't religious Calvinists. They were talking about the, the, the idea that chemical interactions predestined the origin of biological information. And Kenyon himself came to repudiate this idea. And I heard the, one of the first public talks he gave where he publicly announced that he had rejected his own theory. And he did so because of a question that came to him from a student one summer, right before the end of term, and then he got to thinking about it over the summer. And Kenyon had written the best-selling book that everybody had accepted. Biochemical Predestination was the best-selling advanced graduate-level text on the origin of life throughout the 1970s and early 80s. And so you were interested in hearing him, and he was speaking at this conference, so he got up there and you were shocked at what he I said. I was blown away because, you know, he was a, a leading figure in the field, and right. he announced that not just that he had questions about the general approach of the field, but his own theory. And Here's what he came to realize, is that, that the DNA molecule does not lend itself to this kind of explanation. There are molecules that self-organize by mutual attraction. If we think of a crystal of salt, sodium has a plus charge, chlorine has a minus charge, this is NaCl, and you get this nice regular crystalline structure that arises because of self-organizational properties. But DNA, as we said earlier, doesn't have a nice repetitive structure. It's not AG, 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 AG. It's a highly complex arrangement of these characters. And if you look at the molecule, what you see is that this depicts what's called the structural formula for DNA. And you notice you got little, you got the pentagons and the circles. That's what's called the sugar phosphate backbone along the outside of the molecule. And then you have the ACs, Gs, and Ts along the interior. And that's the message bearing axis of the molecule. But notice that what connects all of these subunits are little sticks, and those represent chemical bonds. And notice in the DNA, there are no sticks connecting the A's, C's, G's, and T's. That means there's no chemical interaction between them that could be invoked to explain the sequential arrangement of those, those information-bearing subunits. Right. So I have a, a visual analogy that might get this across in case the chemistry is a little, <laughs> a little heavy. Um, I'm pandering to my host here. John Ankerberg rocks, right? <laughs> now, this is a magnetic chalkboard. And in the analogy, visual analogy, the magnetic chalkboard is like the, the sugar phosphate backbone in the, in the molecule. It's the medium upon which the message is inscribed. But then there is also a message inscribed on the, on the, on the medium, and that is John Ankerberg rocks. But what's responsible for the the, the letter sticking is a, is, a, is a bond, a physical bond, in this case a magnetic attraction, in the case of the, the DNA, a bond called an N-glycosidic bond. So there's a force of chemical attraction that explains why the letters stick to the medium. But notice, we wouldn't want to say that the magnetic letters are responsible for the information in this, in this message. That comes from outside the system. It has an exogenous source, as one scientist puts it. In other words, I arrange the letters to uh, to, to spell this message. It came from a mind. And I can show that the mag magnetism isn't responsible for the message because I can rearrange these letters. We still got all those magnetic forces at work, but now they don't spell a message. Magnetism isn't the explanation for the information. That comes from someplace else. And what we have in DNA is a true message-bearing system where the, the chemistry is not responsible for the sequential arrangement of the characters that convey the message. And Kenyon realized this and realized that therefore there wasn't a self-organizational chemical law that was responsible for the information. It must be coming from someplace else.